So my son just uh, sent me this picture. He says he's uh, lost in the Sahara Desert. Um, I guess this is their Uber system. I don't know. And uh, looks like his GPS might be having some problem with his GPS. But there he is. Uh, he's not. He's got his back turned. Um, anyway, hope he uh, makes it to wherever he's trying to get to safely. Back to chemistry. We've got some single replacement reactions. And um, we're going to see if uh, we can write the full equation and balance them out. So for our reference, we have a uh, copy this from our textbook, our activity series of metals. Um, let's do A. Let's get right into it. Iron is a metal. That's Fe. So we'll denote that with an S for solid. And that's added to lead 2 nitrate. Lead is Pb, and nitrate is the polyatomic ion, NO3. Uh, lead has a 2 positive charge. Um, it has it have multiple charges, so it tells you that. And then nitrate is a polyatomic ion with a 1 negative charge. And once we crisscross them, we're going to have 2 nitrates, turns out. So let's put a parenthesis around this thing and put a 2 outside there. And that's an aqueous solution because it tells us. All right, let's check out the activity series. Is iron more reactive than lead? Uh, right. Iron is more reactive than lead. So it, this, this reaction is going to occur. And uh, we'll find out in a later lesson that um, all single replacement reactions are also known as, uh, can also be classified as uh, redox reactions or oxidation reduction reactions. All right, more on that later. Um, let's switch these cations. Lead is going to be displaced. That's going to be a solid. And I, what? Am I missing something here? How, how are students supposed to know what charge ion, iron has? Am I missing something? All right, uh, let's say it's iron two nitrate. I'm sorry, this is just right out of the textbook. So many mistakes in our textbook. Uh, iron two nitrate. We would give you all this information that you need to know, um, like your charges on transition metals. Um, all right, so that's going to be uh, bring that subscript out there. And go ahead, you see if you pause and see if you know if this is going to be uh, uh, soluble or if it's going to be precipitate. All right, so our solubility rule says uh, nitrates are all uh, soluble, so that's going to dissolve. What that means is it's going to dissolve in water. All right, uh, is this balanced? It's already balanced, so we're good. Let's move on to um, let's move on to B. All right, now B, um, we're giving they're giving you halogens and and um, I don't think you have any of these on your test, uh, but the activity series for halogens is uh, uh, the higher it is on the periodic table, the more reactive it is. Okay, so this is going to happen. Chlorine is going to replace iodine. All right, let's do it. Let me let me label this A B. All right, chlorine dissolved in solution. And sodium iodide also uh, dissolve in solution. And we're going to displace the iodine, which is diatomic. Oh, again, not enough information. All right. Um, this is going to, let's just say it's dissolved, it's still dissolved in water. Okay, we would give you that information on, on a test, whether it's a gas or uh, this is all happening in water. So, uh, and then now sodium is going to be partnered up with this new partner, chlorine. Don't bring that, don't bring that subscript over, right? Don't do that. It's a very, very common uh, habit. All right, sodium chloride, just from general knowledge, you know, that's table salt, dissolves in water. You also know from your solubility rules, which you'll have with you. Um, alkali metal compounds are solubles and uh, halides are generally soluble. 
with a couple exceptions. All right, let's balance this. Doesn't look balanced. All right, we have uh, two chlorine atoms on the left. We have one sodium atom on the left and one iodine atom on the reactant side. All right, in that same order, so we get a side-by-side -side comparison. And there we go. Let's balance out the chlorines first. Why not? All right, let's, now I'm gonna pick a different color. Just a little shade. All right, I'm gonna multiply. Oh, hope you can see that. Uh, multiply the chlorines on the right side by two to get them both to be two on both sides. So I need a, a coefficient of two where you see that chlorine on the product side. All right, but uh, we also need to update the all the other elements on that in that compound. So let's update the sodium. All right, so by balancing out the chlorines on the right, the sodiums on the left have become unbalanced. So let's go over to the reactant side and add a coefficient of two where you see sodium. Okay, now before you move on, don't forget to update the iodine and that's gonna, that's gonna do it for us. It's all, it's all balanced. So coefficients are one, two, one, and two. All right, let's move on to C. Calcium is added to water. Calcium metal is added to water. All right, let's see. All right, calcium is a solid, and water is a liquid. All right, so go ahead, pause. What do you think is going to happen? Oh wait, it already told us it's a single replacement reaction. These are all single replacement reactions. All right, so, um, no, uh, you know, I'm gonna rewrite this. Um, I'm gonna rewrite this. H, O, H. All right, that's H2O, but you can eas more easily see um, the cation and the anion of this H2O. All right, so, so um, we're, we're gonna see if calcium is going to replace hydrogen and calcium is up here hydrogen is down there so it's going to replace it so i'm going to rewrite this back as uh i'm going to leave it like that all right i'm going to i'll rewrite it at the very end because you really shouldn't write water hoh but but i think it helps writing it this way with the uh, cation and the anion um, component all right, so let's switch it. So this is, they're gonna switch places. So hydrogen is, go ahead, what do you think? Is it is it monatomic or diatomic? You got it, it's diatomic, it's gas. And now calcium hydroxide. Wait, does it say it's in the solution? Hey, what am what am I saying? This is this this is water right there. So it is. Uh, this is end up. Wow, this is a tricky one. All right. Um, so because is is water. If you drop calcium metal in water, it's going to um, dissolve calcium hyd calcium hydroxide. Uh. Oh man, I should have pasted my here. You know, I'm going to paste a solubility. Our solubility rule, so you're going to need it here. All right, just uh, copied and pasted our solubility rules. Um, but what I am realizing is, um, well, hydroxides are are uh, generally insoluble. Uh, the, the important ones are the uh, um, sodium hydroxides and potassium hydroxides. They they are 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 important soluble. Hydroxide. Oh, this is, doesn't even tell us on this. I, I made this so generalized it doesn't give us all the exceptions. All right, you would not get this on a test, um, but calcium hydroxide is uh, marginally soluble. We're talking like less than one percent. Um, okay, so we would we would we would give you another example on a test um, for you to determine that it's a, uh, aqueous or not. All right, I'm really sorry about these textbook. Uh, problems. All right, in any case, um, let's uh, let's balance this. Let's, uh, oh, my goodness. 
excuse me, excuse me. All right, so uh, calcium has a two positive charge and hydroxide is a polyatomic ion with a one negative charge, so that's gonna be two there, out there. All right, so let's, you know what, this is good. that We're leaving it written like that, HOH, because it does make it easier to balance sometimes. So I'm going to do that and rewrite it at the very end. All right, I'm going to pick a slightly off color here. Calcium, uh, hydrogen, and um, OH, like that. Um, let's go with that. LCM. Oh, which? All right, one calcium on the on the left. Uh, the H is from right there, and the OH is right there. All right, calcium is uh, there's one hydrogen. There's two. That hydrogen, and then the OH is two. So it's going to make it easier to balance when you break it apart into H and OH for water uh, sometimes. All right, calciums are good. Let's go to the, um, I guess it didn't matter on this one. All right, go to the hydrogen, um, put a coefficient of two there. And, and so we have two uh, H2Os on the left. And that does it. That does it. Not bad. All right, so coefficient is one, two, one, one. One more. Yes. Only one more. Uh, what color? Let's go with orange. Okay. Uh, zinc is added to sulfuric acid. All right. Uh, I need more room. All right, so we're, we're on uh, D. Zinc metal. Put S there for solid. And uh, sulfuric acid. H2SO4. Um, acids in, are going to be um, all in water, dissolved in water. Um, all right. Well, let's check our activity series. Um, zinc is right there. It's going to replace hydrogen. All right, so we're gonna, that's going to form hydrogen gas. Uh, and zinc is a uh, uh, two positive um, transition metal and a uh, sulfate SO4 is a uh, two negative polyatomic ion so they're going to cancel out All right, so uh, let's let's take a, well. Here we go. Let's take a look at our uh, tray over here. So you can see that uh, sulfates are generally soluble. So put AQ. All right, let's balance this out. A zinc, hydrogen, and the sulfate polyatomic ion is, notice it's the same on both reactants on the product, so it's going to be much easier to just uh, keep that as a polyatomic ion. Right now on the other side, zinc, hydrogen, and sulfate. All right, we got one, we got two, we got one, we got one, we got Two, we got, oh, we're balanced, we're done.